Hello, good evening. Uh, welcome to the third session on maths A-level. Uh, my name is Grant McKenzie and I'm here and we're going to cover the following. So it's going to be solving differential equations, uh, implicit differentiation and parametric equations. Um, with the solving differential equations, we're not going to actually be constructing them. So uh, that part of uh, the course has been taken out this year. We're just going to be looking at solving them. It's going to involve integration. Um, so if you need any sort of work on integration or in fact differentiation, uh, you can look back at the saved sort of images or the saved videos that we had. These were sort of videos that were made in the spring of last year. So if you go on the um, Carlum Cymru website, uh, you can see under Maths A level, there's integration, differentiation, um, partial fractions and also functions. Okay, let's get started. So first question is, um, I'm sorry, the pen. So the height above H meters of a passenger on a roller coaster can be modeled by the differential equation. Now, previous to this sort of question, you would have been expected to show that dH by dt, so that's the change in height over the change in time is equal to that. You would have been given a lot more information. Um, actually, maybe with this one, it would have been a case of that it would have been, this is the, the sort of equation, now you need to solve it. Um, but uh, you are only expected to solve it this time around. How are you gonna solve it? Um, so we, first of all, if we write it as dH over dt, so this is the change in height over the change in time, H cos, 0.25t all over 40. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split the dh by dt. So anything involving a h will be on the left hand side, anything involving a t would be on the right hand side. If you've got constants such as the 40 there, it doesn't really make any difference where you put it. Okay. However, because we're integrating which is what a basically differential equation is, we're going to have that plus C. Now, we don't need to put plus C on both sides. We just put it on the one side. Um, it doesn't matter, again, which side it is, but once it's there, and we're putting in this information here where it says giving the passenger is five metres above the ground at the start of the ride. Once we put that information in, the plus C needs to be on whichever side it is. It needs to be constant and consistent. So let's split it. So the H, we're going to move over. And in my case, I'm going to leave the cos 0.25t40 on the right-hand side. So it's going to be the integral of 1 over H, dH equals, and I'm going to put the 1 40th outside, and then it's going to be cos 0.25t, and then that's going to be dt. Um, and as I said in the sort of introduction to this, if you're looking any help at integration, then obviously you can look at the previous videos on this. So 1 over h dh, that's going to be a log. So it's going to be ln h. 1 40th is going to be the same. I'm going to put this in brackets just so I can counteract everything. Um, cos 0.25t. So cos will go to sine. Notice it goes plus because sine goes to cos when differentiated. That 0.25t, so then it's going to be sine 0.25t. Um, if I was to differentiate that, the 0.25 would come outside, so I need to counteract that. So by doing so, it's going to be 4 times sine 0.25t in brackets, and then it's going to be a plus c. Tidying this up, we have log h equals 1 tenth sine 0.25t and then you've got the plus c so that's the differential equation that we've got i obviously need to work out what c is and how i do that is i look back at the, the sort of the literature in the question and it says given that the passenger is five meters so that's five meters above the ground at the start of the ride so that's telling me that t is equal to zero and h is equal to five. So that's my link. Those are my two sort of uh, parts that I'll put in to work out the uh, what c is. So I'm going to put a log of five equals one tenth sine um, zero uh, plus c, 
And since sine of zero is equal to zero, C is equal to ln phi. I'm going to then move over to the other side of the page. So I've got more room. Um, so my equation is ln h equals one tenth sine 0 0.25t and then plus ln 5. Uh, the question then show that h, so I need to now get h on its own. Well, remembering what we need to do with logs, I'm going to move this over to the other side. So I've got ln h minus ln 5 equals um, 0 0.1 sine 0.25t. Um, so then that's going to be ln h over 5 equals 0 0.1 sine 0.25t. Take ease of both sides. Give me then, well, e to the log, they cancel out with each other. So it's h over 5 equals e to the 0 0.1 sine 0.25t. <coughs> uh, excuse me. So then h is equal to 5e to the 0 0.1 sine 0.25t and that is a QED to show that that is the correct answer. I'll stick the last bit in this other part of the bracket. Um, and then to state the maximum height of the passenger above ground. Um, so the maximum value that sine could be, so sine of 0.25t, there's a point there, can either be 1 zero minus one or a combination of any one of those okay so then we would put one in there work it out put zero in there work it out put minus one in there as a matter of fact i believe it is yeah if you put sine uh equal to one you will get h equals five e to the 0 0.1 and then h equals 5.53 so that's h max equals 5.53 and there you go that's answered the question um, next part would be um, okay so in this question because notice it says uh, part two part one was you had to therefore show that this was the case since that's not on the course i've sort of left it out and it's just a case of here's the differential equation to find n in terms of t so therefore we're going to work this out so let's read the part of the question and then go from there <coughs> excuse me so a scientist is attempting to model the number of insects n present in a colony at time t weeks when t equals zero there are 400 insects and when t is equal to 1, there are 420 insects. Okay. In a revised model, uh, it is assumed that dn by dt is equal to n squared over 3988e to the 0.2t. Solve this differential equation to find n in terms of t. So again, it is a case of splitting uh, n squared on one side and anything involving t on the other side. And then you move in and you're splitting that differential part, the dn and the dt. So straight into it, dn over n squared integral is equal to, <coughs> I'm going to put the constant outside so that it would be, uh, so it would be 1 over 3988, there's the other end, and then this is going to be e to the minus 0.2t dt. Obviously, I've moved that e up so I can um, integrate it, and I'm going to move the n up as well, so that this would, if I put a line down, so then this is going to be the integral of n to the minus 2 dn equals 3988 e to the minus 0.2t, n to the minus 2, so that's going to be minus 1 over n, and that's equal to 
um, e to the minus 0.2t um, is going to be 0.2 is the same as one fifth, so that's going to be times 5 e to the minus 0.2t c. Again, need to work out what c is. Also, can all do sort of uh, I forgot that's a minus 5 in there because it's the minus 0.2t. So differential of the uh, exponential, you know it's going to look like e to the minus 0.2t. If you were to sort of differentiate to get back to the original, it would be minus 0.2, which is minus a fifth. Um, and then obviously you can sort of stick that outside and uh, out. To uh, work out the constant C, you either use uh, when t equals 0, there are 400 insects, or when t equals 1, there are 440 insects. I think I'm going to go with the first one because then it might make sort of things a little bit easier. Um, so we would have 1 over n or minus 1 over n is equal to minus 5 over 3988. Um, and then that's going to be plus c. N uh, is uh, obviously 400. And then moving that over, C is going to equal uh, 5 over 3988. And that would be minus the 1 over 400, which will give me an answer of minus 4. 7 over 3988. Uh, putting it back in, we have minus 1 over n equals um, minus 5 over 398 e to the minus 0.2t minus 497 over 3988. <coughs> Uh, now we need to sort of rearrange this or flip it so that we can get n and times everything by minus 1 so that we would have then n is equal to 3988 over 5e to the minus 0.2t plus 3988 over 7 which is therefore the answer to, in a revised model, assume the equation, find n in terms of t. So there's your n in terms of t. There's no other part of this question. So if we move on, there here's another one. Um, so we have the volume of a balloon increases with time, seconds according to the formula. So change in volume of the change in time is equal to 1,000 over 210 plus 1 all squared. So I 2t plus 1 all squared. Uh, given that v is equal to 0 when t is equal to 0, solve the differential equation to obtain v in terms of t. So if we go straight into dv um, equals 1000, uh, 1 over 2t plus 1 all squared dt. In fact, it might be easier if we put the 1000 underneath, uh, if you prefer doesn't make any difference because it's still going to be there. Um, so then this side is going to be V equal to 1000. Um, actually, let's change that to an integral of 2t plus 1 to the minus 2 dt. So then V is equal, V over 1000 is equal to, now again, if we differentiate this, uh, the way it's going to work is we have to drop the power. So instead of minus 2, you increase the power by 1, so it's going to be minus 1. You divide it by the minus 1, and you have to differentiate it inside and take it 1 over. So then this is going to be minus a half, and then it's going to be 2t plus 1 to the minus 1, and that is again going to give you that plus c. So it's going to be v over 1,000 equals minus 
1 over 2, 2t plus 1, uh, plus c. Okay, now using the information v equals 0 and t is equal to 0, we need to work out the value of c. Um, so if v is equal to 0, you have 0 equals, and then that would be minus 1 over 2 plus c. So c is equal to a half. So we have v over 1,000. 1 over 2, 2t plus 1, plus a half. Because it wants it v in terms of t, we're going to move this 1,000 over to the other side, but we're going to have to multiply each term by that 1,000. So it might be, just to sort of remind you what to do, we therefore times everything by a 1,000, and in doing so, we get v equals minus 500, over 2t plus 1 plus 500 um, and then that solves this there may be a part d to this where it could be uh, work out the volume when t is equal to 4 that's just simply replacing t by 4 or it may be work out what the the time when the volume is equal to 100 you just don't know what it's sort of trying to work out Either or, you just substitute it in for one, rearrange it to work out the other. And that's basically all that's needed for differential equation. So with differential equations, you split either side, um, depending on uh, what you're integrating in with respect to. You then, once integrated, you then look at the sort of common bits of information. So as one variable is equal to something, the other variable equals the other. That helps you work out what the constant is. And then you've got your differential equation. Okay, let's move on to parametrics. So here, parametrics. Uh, the best way I've heard parametrics described is you have three variables. Um, one variable, one variable links the other two, um, and then you can sort of two variables by that one variable. Okay, so um, for example. Um, Ice cream sales would increase if the temperature increases. Okay, so then you've got ice cream linked to the temperature. Sunscreen would be in sales would increase with the temperature increasing. There is no definite link between ice cream sales and um, sunscreen sales. However, both of them are linked with the temperature increasing. So if you had enough information about sales and all the rest of it, you could probably come up with a formula that links the increase in temperature by the number of sales of ice cream. Also, you could probably come up with a formula that links the number of sales of, the, of sunscreen with the, again, with the increase in temperature. There, then, since you have that temperature increase link, you can sort of link the number of sales of ice cream with the number of sales of sunscreen. Okay, it's that sort of third variable that links the two other variables. In this case, you have t, if you notice, x is equal to 3 plus 2 sine t, and y is equal to 4 plus 2 cos 2t. So in this case, t is linking x and y. <coughs> and then you need to find how to link it. You're either going to be substituting it in, or depending if it's trigonometry, you're going to look at trigonometry or trigonometric identities. So we have here a curve C has parametric equations. Show that all points on C satisfy that their equation, which is in Cartesian. So either we're going to have to square them, especially if it's in terms of sine or cos, or we're going to have to use one of the identities. Um, if we're going to square them, then it's obviously we're going to be using sine squared t plus cos squared t is equal to 1. In this case, however, this is the one we're going to use. So we're going to put down that cos 2t is the same as cos squared t minus sine squared t. Um, so then cos 2t is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared t. Now this is therefore going to be the link. I know then that I can put x in terms of sine t 
which means I can put it into there. And I can put y in terms of cos 2t, which I means I can put it into there. So we need to now rearrange the other equations. So using a different color, we can say that x minus 3 equals 2 sine t, or sine t is equal to x minus 3 over 2. Um, because I need it squared, I can then square both sides. The sine squared t is equal to x minus 3 over 2 all squared. And then on the other side, I can say that um, 2 cos 2t equals y minus 4. And 2 cos, I don't want to put the 2 there, cos 2t is equal to y minus 4 all over 2. Now I have sine squared and cos 2t, so I can substitute it back into that equation. So I'm going to put y minus 4 over 2 is equal to 1 minus 2 times x minus 3 over 2 all squared, uh, which is going to be y minus 4 over 2 equals 1 minus 2 x minus 3 all squared over 4. Bring the 2 over to the other side. So it's y minus 4 equals uh, 2 minus 4 over x minus 3 all squared over 4. They're going to cancel out. The minus 4 comes to be a, a plus 4. So y equals 6 minus x minus 3 all squared. That's the first part done. Um, sketch the curve of C. Well, this is going to be a parabola because you've got x squared. I know transformation of curves aren't in it. However, you should be able to, from sort of GCSE, know that this part here, so in different color, this part here is going to be a parabola, which is shifted to the um, right and is also a negative parabola. So it's going to be a U shape. And also the six there is going to mean that it has been shifted up along the y-axis. Um, we also need to put in values for plus or minus, the sign can be plus or minus one, um, so that you can get the maximum values on the x. So x plus, sorry, x equals three plus two, and x equals three minus two. So the graph is going to be um, between one x and five because put in sine as a maximum of one is going to give you the five and minimum of minus one is going to give you the one there so the shape of it I draw it like so where this point is going to be five and i'll work at the y coordinates in a second this point is going to be one um, and then it's going to have a maximum value here of something six. Now sticking these into um, the y side or would give you the sort of correct answers. Um, but again, if you sort of put cos as a maximum of um, one in there, then it's going to be four five six so that's where the six comes from and it's going to be a minimum of two so these points here are going to be two uh, also then put the sign equal to zero you're going to have three there um, and then it says explain briefly why it does not include all the points of well the reason why it doesn't include all the points is because it's limited by its parametric equations. If I was to just draw y equals 6 minus x minus 3 all squared, then it would be an infinite graph. These would go down to minus infinity of both sides. However, because we've been given these parametric equations, it's been stopped at those points for the reasons given. Um, if we move on to the next question. So this time now we have... 
instead of it being uh, trigonometric, we've got these parametric equations. So a curve has parametric equations x equals t plus 2t, y is equal to t minus 2t. It's asking us to work out dy by dx in terms of t, given your answer in its simplest form. Black, so if we move down. So from um, our work, we know that dy by dx is dy by dt divided by dx by dt. So the first thing we need to do is differentiate each of the parametric equations. So let's say dy by dt would go to 1 minus is, um, if I write them up here, this is the same as x equals t plus 2t minus 1, y equals t minus 2t minus 1. Um, so when we're differentiating, uh, this is going to become plus 2t to the minus 2. And then the next one, so dx by dt, the 1 minus 2t to the minus 2. Um, so dy by dx is 1 plus 2t to the minus 2 over 1 minus 2t to the minus 2. That doesn't look great. So what I would probably do is multiply, I would multiply top and bottom by 2 squared, t squared, sorry so that I get t squared plus 2 over t squared minus 2. In that case, we're in its simplest form. That's part uh, 1 done. Part 2. Uh, explain why the curve has no stationary points. Uh, if, again, you look back at AS material, uh, to work out a stationary point, you would differentiate you would put the differential equal to zero because that's where the, the gradient on a maximum minima is zero. Um, and in doing so, you would solve. So let's just do that. So we would say that dy by dx is equal to zero, leaving us with t squared plus two over t squared minus two equal to zero. The bottom bit would come up over to the other side. So we're left with t squared plus two is equal to zero, t squared is equal to minus two, t is equal to plus or minus the square root of minus two. Because you cannot square root a negative number, it therefore means that there is no stationary points for this curve. So uh, cannot square root uh, minus number, no stationary points. And then the third part, uh, by considering x and y or otherwise, find the Cartesian equation of the curve, given your answers in the form not involving fractions or brackets. So Cartesian coordinates just means it wants y in terms of x, um, or it could mean that x in terms of y as long as it is just involving those and it is specifically said it doesn't want fractions so it needs to be whole numbers or integers and it doesn't want any brackets so how would we go on about doing this well it says by considering x plus y so then that's the first thing we do on this side x plus y is equal to um, t plus 2 over t plus t minus 2 over t. So we have x plus y is equal to 2t, or t equals 1 half x plus y. Now, it doesn't matter which one you substituted in. You can substitute uh, this into x equals t plus 2t, or you can substitute it y equals t minus 2t, but you don't need to do it into both because you end up with the same answer. Um, so if I substitute it into x, I'm going to say that x equals 1 half x plus y plus 2 over x plus y. Right, perfect. So I'm, I've got now it in Cartesian form because it only has x's and y's. However, the question is specifically said no fractions or brackets. So I'm going to have to multiply then everything by t 
to get rid of the half, I'm going to times it by 2. And to get rid of the x plus y on the bottom, I'm going to times it by x plus y, which will give me x, sorry, 2x, x plus y equals x plus y squared plus 4. Expanding this gives me 2x squared plus 2xy equals, expanding this is uh, either a double bracket on itself or so it would be x plus y times x plus y, uh, where you'd use foil or smiley face. I'm going to square the first is going to give me x squared, twice the product is going to give me plus 2xy and square the last is going to give me plus y squared and that's going to be plus 4. If I now take this, the x squared over to the other side, I've got 2x squared minus x squared, so that's just going to be x squared. I take the 2xy is there, and I take the other one over, that's going to be minus 2xy, so that's going to go. I'll tell you what, instead of just me telling you, I'll put them down. That way then you can see exactly where I'm getting everything from. Minus y squared equals 4. So that I end up with x squared minus y squared equals 4. And then I have now put it into Cartesian form without any brackets and without any fractions. Moving on to the next question. So again, the curve has parametric equations. I think I've got two more parametrics and then I move on to implicit. So the curve has parametric equations x equals 3t. Um, I'm going to change this straight away, so it'll be 3t to the minus 2, and y equals 4t cubed. The point P lies on C and has parameter P. Find and simplify the equation of the tangent to the point. Okay, so what do I need to work out the equation of a tangent? Well, the equation of a tangent is a straight line, so I need coordinates, one coordinate, and I need the gradient. So if I put um, x equal to 3t to the minus 2 and y equals 4t cubed, remembering to work out the gradient, it's dy by dx equals dy by dt over dx by dt. So you would do dy by dt equals, so that's going to be 12t squared, and then dx by dt is going to be uh, minus 6t to the minus 3. Um, and then dy by dx is 6t to the minus 3. No, it's not. The wrong one. Is 12t squared over 6t to the minus 3, which is 2t to the 5. Um, the third point, P, lies on C with parameter P. So it's basically, to work out everything, you have to put it in terms of P. So I would substitute where T is, P, so then the gradient is 2P to the 5. Okay, so this now here is my gradient. Now I need to work out the coordinates. So the x-coordinate is 3 over p squared and the y coordinate is 4p cubed. To work out the equation of a tangent, remember it's the equation of a straight line, we're going to use y equals mx plus c. So y is 4p cubed, the m is 2p to the 5, x is 3 over p squared and then obviously I'm there to work out c. Um, I'm missing something. Ah, I'm missing the minus. Sorry, let's track back. So I missed that minus there when it's there. So on the bottom there, and therefore it's going to be in here as well. Do apologize. Um, so we have 4p cubed equals minus 6p cubed plus c. This will move over to the other side, so c is equal to 10p cubed. So the equation of the tangent, I mean, 
that's uh, sort of good enough to work out C, but you have to always make sure when you work out the equation of a straight line that you put that back in. So we have Y equals minus 2P5 X, um, and then it's going to be plus 10P cubed. I don't know why I put brackets on there. Uh, but it looks a bit weird, so I'm going to get rid of them. There you go. So that would be the equation of the straight line of a tangent. Uh, one. Here we have the curve. C shows the parametric equations. 8t cubed minus, sorry, x equals t cubed minus 8t. Y is equal to t squared, where t is the parameter. Given that the point A has parameter t equals minus 1, find the coordinates of A. So we would then say that um, x is equal to minus 1 cubed minus 8 times minus 1, which is 7. And then y equals minus 1 squared, which is 1. So the coordinates are 7, 1 uh, for a equals and then it says the line L is a tangent to C at A. Show that the equation for the L is that. So same thing again. We're going to do dy by dt, which is going to be um, ut. And then the x by dt is going to be 3t squared minus 8. Uh, dy by dx is 2t over 3t squared minus 8. And then we're going to put t equal to minus 1. And then putting t equal to minus 1, we're going to have 2 times minus 1 over 3 times minus 1 squared minus 8, which is minus 2 over minus 5, which is 2 fifths. Remembering if we're asked for the normal, although we're asked for the tangent in this case, then we can just use that number, two-fifths. But if we're asked the normal, we have to m1 times m2 equals minus 1. So we would invert it and change the sign. So the normal tangent, uh, the normal gradient would be minus 5 over 2. Again, using y equals mx plus c, where the y is equal to 1 because we previously worked it out what the coordinates were. We've got two fifths for the gradient and seven for x, and that is plus c. So that's going to be 14 over 5. We times everything by 5. We have got 5 equals 14 plus c. c is equal to 5 minus 14. So c is equal to minus 9. Um, sticking it back in, we have y equals two-fifths x, um, I forgot to put the five on there as well, let's go back and change that, when I times everything by five, I had forgot to multiply it by the c as well, so I need to put five c, five, and then that's divided by five as well, so that's going to be minus nine over five, and then multiply everything by 5, so you get 5y equals 2x minus 9. Uh, what format do we need to put it in? So it's going to be 2x minus 5y minus 9 equals 0, which is the exact answer that we've got there. And then moving on, now we're going to go on to um, implicit differentiation. So the curve, now with implicit differentiation, um, if it's an x in there, you differentiate it like normal. If it's an x and a y in there, you differentiate the x like normal, treating the y as a constant and working that out. Then you go back to the exact same um, term and then you differentiate it, keeping the y, the x is a constant this time, so you differentiate with respect to y and anything that you've been differentiated with the y has dy by the x. Okay, so what I mean by that is we have x cubed, 3x squared y plus y squared plus 1. Okay, so the first run would be to differentiate the x's. So it's going to be 3x squared minus, and then now this is going to be 6xy 
because it's got a Y in there, I need to go back over it. And then this is going to be minus 3x squared dy by dx. And then it's going to be plus 2y dy by dx. Differential of a constant is um, just means that the constant goes. So then this is going to be equal to 0. Uh, we're told that we need it in that format. So how we would then work that out would be we would collect the dy by dx on one side, move everything else to the other side, factorize, and do almost like a change of subject uh, in terms of putting it into dy by dx and move it over to the other side. So we would have 2y dy by dx minus 3x squared dy by dx equal to 6xy minus 3x squared. Uh, dy by dx is equal to, it's not equal to it, and we'll do it across. We're factorizing it, so it's going to be 2y minus 3x squared, and that is equal to 6xy minus 3x squared. dy by dx equals 6xy minus 3x squared over 2y minus 3x squared, which is exactly what we've got for there. It then says, find the equation of the normal to the curve at the point 1, 2. Again, it's a straight line. The normal is just meaning that it, the gradient of the normal is perpendicular to the tangent at that point. So if we work out the gradient of the tangent um, and then do m1 times m2 equals minus 1, that we've got the normal gradient. So we would put dy by dx is equal to 6 times 2 times 1 minus 3 times 1 squared over 2 times 2 minus 3 times 1 squared, which, just sticking it into the calculator, comes up as 9. So the tangent gradient is 9. So using m in m1 times m m2 equal to minus 1 so 9 times minus 1 ninth equals minus 1 so this is my normal gradient again y equals mx plus c so we have y which is equal to 2 equals minus 1 ninth times 1 plus c, c therefore is equal to 20 over 9, so y equals minus 1 ninth x plus 20 over 9. It hasn't asked us to put it in any format, but if it did say write it as ax plus by plus c equal to 0, where a, b and c are integers, times everything by 9, so you get 9y um, that would be plus x minus 20 equal to 0. Uh, we've got time for one more where it says, given that 2x to the 4 minus x squared sine y plus uh, y to the 5 minus 4x plus 17 equals 0, find an expression for dy by dx in terms of x and y. So again, we're going to differentiate them implicitly. So let's deal with the x's first of all. Um, it might help you to do it in different colors uh, as you're getting used to it. So then this is going to be 8x cubed minus, and remember now we're keeping the sine y as a constant, so it's going to be 2x sine y. Uh, we now need to go back to that. Let's do that blue again. We now need to go back to that, and we're keeping the x squared as a constant, so minus x squared and then sine y would differentiate to cos would differentiate to cos y and then we'd have to put the dy by dx by it and then it is going to be 5y to the 4 dy by dx um, and then that's going to be a minus 4 we don't need the dy by dx because we're differentiating with respect to the x and then that will be plus 17. Uh, we need to collect 
not plus 17, sorry. The differential of uh, 17 is just zero. Uh, well, that's going to be equal to zero. Now we need to collect everything in terms of dy by dx on the one side. Everything else goes over to the other side. So I'm going to leave the 5y to the 4 dy by dx minus x squared cos y dy by dx equals uh, the 4 plus 2x sine y minus 8x cubed and then factorizing the left hand side so you have dy by dx 5y to the 4 minus x squared cos y equals 4 plus 2x sine y minus 8x cubed so we have that the differential or the gradient function is 4 plus 2x sine y minus 8x cubed all over 5y to the 4 minus x squared cos y excellent okay thank you very much and i'll see you next week for our last installment where i'll be going covering over a, a past paper questions so that you can see exactly what it would look like thank you